Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 145. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, Eli Malinsky's dug up DOS games backslash arcade 3 backslash supermind. So are we going to have another mastermind type game or... <laughs> okay. It Wait, what? It's, it's a folder called supermind with an executable called mastermind? Really? <laughs> That's the only thing here, so let's run it and see where we end up. Lance Miklas presents with some kind of caricature there. Um, well, there it goes. Mr. Mind. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, to be fair, the the A and the E are missing from the titles, or from the executable name, so it looks like Master Mind. It's actually called Mr. Mind, but it's in a folder called Super Mind. <laughs> okay, then. Also, that's weird. Copyright 79 in 1990? Huh. One player is the code break maker, the other is player's code breaker. Secret code is made up of four digits. Code breaker gets ten chances to break the code using the following clues. The one particular smiley number tells you how many digits are the correct number in the lo correct location, and the other one tells you how many digits are the correct number in the wrong location. So we can display instructions for the game, which, yeah, it's just that screen. Um, computer's IQ. Human's IQ, type of game, human guesses, play game. Hmm. Well, I guess we're doing human versus computer. <laughs> Apparently we can set our IQ to chicken mode if we want to. Now we'll just do it advanced for both. Uh, play game. Enter your four digit code or press I to see the rules of the game. I'm going to make my code 1024. Okay then. Um, so I guess I'm already um, already trying to guess the computer's thing. So apparently only one of those digits is correct. Hmm. That's not even in the right pop spot, so... Well, hang on a second here. 0124, 0356... So we've already guessed every possible digit, but we've only potentially seen three of them correct. So that means there can be repeats. Hmm. Two, three, three, four. Uh, no, not that. Two, three, three, five. Well, one of them's in the right spot, but only one of them is in the right spot. So that means out of 2, 3, and 5, hmm, oh right, even though 3 and, even though there can only be, there can't be both 3 and 5, it could still be one of them in the puzzle. So that makes sense then. But, still isn't helping us too, too much. Although it probably means that 3 or 5 is present. And it's not going to be two threes. One, one. What? Okay. So only one of those. So that means it's probably five then. And no ones. So I'm going to guess six, four, four, five? Or no, that's another six. Six, four, four, five. Wow, three of them are in the correct spot. <laughs> So, only one of those is wrong. I'm going to guess it's one of the fours. So let's try six, four. No, six, five, four, five. And we got it. So we guess it in seven turns. And now it's the compute. Now the computer gets to try and guess mine. 
So let's do this again. Let's put in 1024. Oh, interesting. So I actually have to tell the computer, I have to indicate to the computer how many of the different things there are. So how many did he get perfect? He actually got one perfect. And then unfortunately he also got two <laughs> that are correct, correct digits, but in the wrong spot. And now this time he has none of them in the correct spot. But he actually <laughs> guessed all four of them. Oh boy. Well, this is going to go quick, isn't it? <laughs> Still the same. He, he's not getting any of the position. Up oh, there he goes. <laughs> well, that was lucky on his part. Uh, oh well. And then apparently it's tracking the average number of guesses per code, so if you keep playing it multiple times over. So yeah, that was Mr. Mind, kind of Mastermind clone. It actually works pretty well. Um, doesn't look like it was... Doesn't look like it was being charged money for it. Like there was no text documentation, there's nothing saying... Nothing saying in terms of registration or shareware or anything like that. So I'm guessing it's probably freeware. It, it's acceptable. Next up, Dookie's dug up DOS games backslash arcade 2 backslash heavy jog. I think I might actually know what this one is. Um, so we got a setup, we got a jogger, readme, a lot of VBL files, whatever those are. Um, well, I guess we'll go readme.first. Heavy Water Jogger. Yep, that's what I thought it was. Okay. So if I'm remembering correctly, this game's actually kind of really boring, but maybe I just wasn't playing it right. Anyways, um, arrow keys. Used to move Fred around the plant. Press an arrow key once and you move. Second time to stop. Space causes Fred to jump if he's running. R lets you run if you're walking. M displays the map. O turns things on, I displays inventory, stats window, T for Fred to take an anti-rad pill. These controls are all over the keyboard. <laughs> this is not, this is going to be tricky. Oh, hello. Just think, in 2012, <laughs> the registered version of this game will be an antique, a collector's item worth thousands of dollars. People will be astonished by your foresight. Funny thing is, it's actually kind of true. <laughs> but then part of the part of what builds the value of something is if there's demand for it. And I don't think there's going to be demand for this game. <laughs> but in any case, it was apparently made by uh, Casey Butler. And I'm not seeing a price on it. Is there an order form? Um, yes there is. Twenty-five dollars! Whoa! Okay, if the thing is, is I remember this game not being very good. Twenty-five dollars might be a bit much. But, you know, we'll give it another try. So yeah, Heavy Water Jogger. Version 1.0. Aw, oh, come on, Fred. You know how it is with games like this. The less said, the better. Just watch for the drainage pits. You can't jump from a walk. Oh, and watch for those V7734 series floating robots. You know, the ones you had installed to protect the plant from those protesters. Try not to touch the walls. Uh, maybe every now and then check under those ventilation shaft covers. You've always suspected your employees of pilfering company goods and stashing them there for safekeeping. And mark your progress, Fluke. You never know when you may need to remember whether that hallway led somewhere or not. Well, maybe if you had been more interested in the real workings of your plant, you'd know your way around better. Or maybe this never would have happened in the first place. Yeah, this is kind of a weird document, because it's kind of like written in-universe, but also kind of not. 
Wait, this screen here is saying that the game is $20. That's not good. You can't have your game showing one value while the documentation shows a different value. That's very sketchy, especially when the game's showing a smaller price. And no, I'm not going to print it order for it right now. <laughs> Some interesting PC speaker sound there. Okay. <laughs> I kind of completely forgot that this intro was in this game. <laughs> Um, there's a decibels option. <laughs> decibels just turns the sound off. Um, okay, so we actually do have some story here. So, welcome to Three Miles Island. The, or, no, Three Miles Inland. <laughs> the newest, biggest, and most dangerous nuclear power plant yet to be constructed. Uh, how do I have Ash pages? Oh, page down. You are Fred Fluke, dedicated jogger and power walker extraordinaire. This is your town, your neighborhood, the place you've chosen to raise your family, earn your living, and mow your lawn. You knew back when you first heard of the planned power plant that your little town would be annihilated should anything ever go wrong with the plant's complex systems of safety checks and balances. So for two years, ever since you started running the place, you have driven your BMW to the scenic overlook that overlooks the plant. <laughs> that redundantly redundants the plant, and run your morning jog around its perimeter. With your trusty Japanese-made wrist Geiger counter, you have faithfully kept tabs on the levels of radiation escaping from the plant. Then this morning, it happened. Upon exiting your car, your wrist Geiger counter screamed in dismay. You climbed plant fence, ran to the entrance, and forced open the door. On the employee bulletin board, just inside the door, you saw a crudely scrawled sign that read, I've had it. No more pay cuts. I can't live on minimum wage. Nobody can. I've cut the flow of co cooling water to the reactor. In 30 minutes, the plant will flood and meltdown will be inevitable. Barricaded myself in the executive offices, waiting for the end. If anyone ever reads this, never vote Republican again. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, jeez. This game suddenly went from ridiculous to political in, like, the fraction of a second. <laughs> Oh, boy. So, yeah, 30 minutes. There's a map on the bulletin board. Places a maze. And the keys are scattered all over the keyboard because of reasons. Okay, let's turn the sound back on. And let's actually try playing it. So, our... <laughs> Those are some interesting difficulty selections. We have walkthrough, sorta hard, and impenetrable. I'm just gonna put it on walkthrough. You know, just in case. Um. Okay then. <laughs> so we have a map. Oh, that not close enough, really? What? Okay, so um, here's the map of the facility. <laughs> What? The game expects us to make our way through this? This is a disaster. <laughs> Look at the size of this place. Oh boy. Well, let's start making our way through. I guess that's one of those robots that we can't really deal with or something. Oh, it's following. Well, 
Whoops. Okay. So. Uh. Whoops. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Oh wait, F1 just puts down, um, marks to help, to help you. How do we actually get back to the help screen again? Okay, here we go. Like, maybe we can just walk around this little thing? Nope. <laughs> and now we're back here. Lovely. I guess we have to go into running mode? Whoa! That's a lot faster. Okay, so that actually lets us jump over those pits then. Unless we accidentally fall down like that. <laughs> And that's a dead end. That's also a dead end. Oh, really? Really? That wasn't there. It just, the game just put that there, and now I have to go back to the start again. Okay, so the rope. The robot wasn't even on screen. Okay, so it's not that the game is boring, it's that you literally are just walking around and you have this ginormous maze that you have to survive. Like, look at the size of this maze again. This is not a small maze. Actually, the funny thing is, is that I just suddenly noticed how you're supposed to get through this maze. <laughs> I'm actually really good at solving mazes, and I actually... <laughs> I was just looking at some of the edges and I suddenly saw the path through the maze. I'll actually highlight it now for all of you. But... Actually getting there is going to be difficult. That's like halfway... You basically... I'd have to walk all the way around the perimeter, and then go through the middle section there, and if I get interrupted by robots or pits or anything, it's like, I'm screwed. I gotta do it all over again. Well, I guess the pits don't reset me, but the robots sure do. I don't know if I approve of having pits halfway between screens. Hopefully it's not too much longer to the other corner. I'm still going. This is just the, this is just the top part of the section that I'm trying to run across. Oh boy. Finally hit the corner here. Of course, now here's the ex the next problem is I don't remember which pathway I'm supposed to go down. What the? F what? This is like E.T. Syndrome all over again. I, it put me out of the pit, I pushed a direction that was not the direction of the pit, and I fell in the pit. You know what, screw it. <laughs> if a game is making me think back to the problems that E.T. on the Atari 2600 had, I don't think I want to keep playing it. So that was Heavy Water Jogger. It's I like the fact that it has the the whole nuclear power plant thing going on, and that it's tongue-in-cheek, and that it's not being afraid to be weird with its story and everything, but no, this gameplay is not good. This gameplay is... you just run, you just run and jump over pits and hope that robots aren't in the way. That's all there is to it. And our last game for today comes from Yarmoranta. DOS games backslash arcade 2 backslash ricochet. Amazingly, I think I know what this game is too. Um, we got a ricochet.doc and a ricochet.exe and a code.txt with two characters in it. Okay then. Ricochet.doc. The object. Or, no. <laughs> I don't know how where I got the from. Object. To blow up all guns of the opposite color from yours. Red kills blue and blue kills red. Use left and right arrow keys to select angle of fire. Press spacebar to shoot. Oh. 
this is not the game I thought it was. Okay, so there's a game that I played in the past called Ricochet, which was a um, very complex sort of game where you ha would have to type in your angles to fire up sort of beam at, and then you were trying to bounce it around in certain ways to, tr to get the points up. It is a very difficult and complex game in terms of scoring, but it didn't have this kind of control layout, so it can't possibly be the same game. Interesting. So the game has multiplayer support, like for up to two people in the same system, but you have to register to enable that, and the registration fee is $3 to a Rob Cobble. So that's actually a pretty low registration fee. So I'm not expecting too, too much out of this game. Not like Heavy Water Jogger where they wanted 20 or $25, but let's see here. So yeah, this is not the same game I was thinking of. Would you like to register? Uh, not right now. You need to register the program if you want to use player versus player mode. Yep. How many bounces for shot to count? Uh, let's make it two. Name of red player, me. Uh... So for the moment, I'm controlling this red thing here on the left side of the screen. So for the shot to count, it has to bounce off two walls. So let's try there. And I accidentally destroyed one of my own. Well, that's okay. The computer destroyed one of his own, too. Um... Oh, but now I'm controlling this one instead of... Interesting. So each time you take a turn, it advances to the next one in the line. There we go. Oh, he got one of mine too. But he just got one of his as well. So the game's going interesting so far. No, oh, that totally hit him, not me. <laughs> oh, that totally passed straight through me. So, hello, bad hit collision detection. Okay, let's see if I can get this last one here. Oop, it's coming down to it. There we go. And I win. And that's it. Well, that was quick. So yeah, that was Ricochet. It's a very basic game. The guy only wants $3 to enable playing player versus player. So I guess if this appeals to you, it's ultimately a very basic game, but you know, it plays fine. So yeah, I guess if you wanted to support somebody who's just learning how to learning how to get their programming going and designing very simple games, well, there's an option for you, and I just blew up my own guy. <laughs> uh.